Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to uh, this Monday weekly market review again. A lot of things happened last week and a lot of things will be happened this week as well. And as usual, we have Mr. Gerald Wong with us today to update us on what is happening in the market. How are you, Gerald? Very well. Um, like you mentioned, uh, we had quite significant developments in the market last week. Uh, we are starting the earnings season. So what I want to share today will be some of what has happened in the past week as well as what to look out for as we go into the result season. Yes, I hope you are not affected by the Microsoft or CrowdStrike update outage last Friday. Uh, no, I think I read in the papers that some people managed to have an early start to the weekend, but I wasn't one of them, still had to work till 6pm on Friday, uh, but thankfully hasn't been affected by the tech outage. Okay, then I should not uh, delay your time and let you get started to update us on what is happening in the market right now. Okay, so as usual, um, today's sharing is for information purposes only and should not be taken to be financial advice. Um, we just concluded our Ask Sias for the month of July. If you missed that, we have a Ask Sias that is on the 21st of August. Uh, you can register by scanning the QR code. Okay, um, if you find the weekly market review helpful, um, do leave us a review on Google. And if you're wondering how you can join Sias as a member, you can scan this QR code or go to the website slash membership and the membership will cost $12 per year or only $1 per month. Okay, so what do we see for the markets in the past week? Um, after recording several weeks of rise, uh, where the S&P 500 was at a record high, uh, we started to see some correction in the past week. Uh, so the S&P 500 was down by 2%. And as we can see from this summary, uh, this was mainly led by the tech stocks with the NASDAQ down by 3.6%. Okay. Um, closer to home, we also started to see some moderation in the Swiss Times Index, uh, which was down 1.4% in the past week. Uh, once again, after having performed very well in the previous weeks. Okay, so what was the news that came out last week uh, really around the geopolitical risk? Um, the Biden administration um, warned allies that it could implement drastic trade restrictions on foreign shipmakers if they continue to supply advanced ships to China. Okay, so this is according to a report that came out on Bloomberg. Okay, at the same time, uh, we saw uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump uh, saying that Taiwan, which is actually at the center of the global chipmaking industry, should be paying for its own defense. Okay, so this comments and press reports actually led to renewed concerns around geopolitical risks as well as greater US-China trade tensions, uh, which actually led to a fall in the chipmaker stocks as well as the tech stocks. Okay, so this is what we see particularly for the chip-related stocks. Um, I measure this using the uh, Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. Um, and what we see here is that after reaching fairly high levels um, at the start of this month, um, there was a sizable correction in the past week at the back of this news flow. Okay, so together with that, I think um, investors are once again concerned as to whether that will lead to inflation coming back. Uh, the Fed may not be able to cut interest rates as much as what was intended. And we see this slight bounce in terms of the US government bond yields. Okay, so closer to home, uh, we had the STI falling in the past week, but despite that, there were a few stocks that still managed to do fairly well. Uh, this was led by Thai Beverage, which was up by more than 4%. Uh, Singtel, Yang Zetiang Shipbuilding, STA Engineering, those are stocks that we had covered in previous weekly market review and actually um, having gains over the past week. Okay, in terms of top losers, uh, we see DBS down by 3.3%. Uh, we see some of the Capital Land related names, uh, Capital Land Investment down by 3.6% and CICT down by 3.3%. 
Okay, um, so the name that I wanted to share a bit more about today is Thai Beverage, okay? Um, earlier, we saw that it was the top gainer in the STI uh, and as we see from this chart, um, after reaching a low of below 45 cents, uh, it rebounded in the past week uh, to about 50 cents. Okay, so what was the news that came out? Uh, it is a proposed share swap uh, that will increase uh, Thai Bear stake in FNN um, and it will also fully divest its indirect stake in Fraser's property. Okay, so uh, this is a summary of the transaction and what we see here is that previously um, Thai Bear um, actually owns 100% of this entity called uh, International Beverage Holdings. Okay, um, and effectively this will then have a 28.31% stake in FMN and 28.8% stake in Fraser's property, okay? Um, and what we see is that TCC actually has a 58.9% stake in FNN and a 58.1% stake in Fraser's property. Through this proposed share swap, okay, uh, effectively Thai Beverage will no longer have the stake in Fraser's property, which will be transferred to TCC, and it will increase its stake in FNN to 69.61%. Okay, so this is a summary of the proposed share swap. Okay, in terms of what the company has shared in terms of the rationale of the transaction, um, they want to be building new capabilities. Uh, they want to strengthen Thai Bear's position uh, within the businesses that it is in, as well as to unlock potential of the company and to drive potential higher valuation. Okay, we'll look at each of this rationale in more detail. Okay, so we start with the first one, which is really trying to provide it with um, the strength in terms of being able to leverage on FNN's leading market position, such that some of these brands can be introduced to other markets and adjacent products. Okay, so um, FNN has some of these brands, such as 100 Plus, Ice Mountain, that we are all very familiar with under the company and by um, having a now larger stake in FNN, uh, Thai Beverage wants to be leveraging on this portfolio and be able to sell some of these uh, products into other product segments that it is already operating in, okay? So they believe that this will provide it with critical competitive advantages um, in some of these um, segments that it may not have as strong a presence in at this point in time. Okay, um, at the same time, within the uh, core business that Thai Beverage have, uh, the company believes that it will help to strengthen its leading position and help it to establish as a pure play beverage and food business within Southeast Asia. Okay, so this will be in the four key segments, including spirits, beer, non-alcoholic beverages, as well as in food. Okay, so this is the expected um, change in the composition of uh, Thai beverage revenue uh, from the share swap. Okay, so currently what we see is that alcohol beverages will constitute about 86% of its revenue uh, with non-alcoholic beverages and food at about 7% each. Okay, but uh, with the proposed share swap, uh, alcoholic beverages will fall to about 71%. And then we see that the non-alcoholic beverages will increase to 21%. Okay. In terms of geography, um, Thai Bev is very ex exposed to Thailand at this point in time at about 72% of its revenue. Uh, Vietnam is at 21%. And then we see the others at 7.2%. After the proposed share swap, uh, the representation of Thailand will come down to about 65%. Uh, Vietnam to about 18%. And then we see some other markets like Malaysia and Singapore uh, will actually contribute about 10% um, combined towards Thai best revenue. Okay, um, in terms of the impact to the earnings based on what the company has shared, um, the transaction is expected to be accretive to its earnings by about 4.3%. Um, so that is something that they would deem to be positive for shareholders of the company. Okay, and then the third point is really about unlocking potential of the company. 
Um, so based on the valuation of other companies within the uh, food and beverage space, uh, they see that in terms of the pure play dairy companies, uh, they are trading at about 20 times EV EBITDA. Non-alcoholic beverages about 17.1 times EV EBITDA. Um, and Thai Bev currently at 10.4 times. So that is where they see that with the increased exposure towards uh, non-alcoholic beverages as well as dairy, um, they hope to be able to drive a higher valuation for the stock. Okay, so in terms of the timeline, um, the transaction was announced last week on the 18th of July. Uh, there'll be a dispatch of the EGM circular. Um, and the EGM is expected to be held uh, sometime in mid-September. And if it is approved by shareholders, um, the transaction is expected to be completed by the end of this quarter, 2024. Okay, so with that, I'll share about Thai Bev's transaction and why the share price saw a bounce in the past week. Uh, quite a number of things to keep a lookout for in the coming week. Okay, uh, in terms of the macro, we have the US retail sales data. Uh, for those of you who are following US stocks, uh, we have Tesla and Google reporting earnings this week. But for many of us who are following the REIT sector, we are starting to see the start of the REIT reporting season uh, with names such as Paper Tree Logistics Trust, Paper Tree Industrial Trust, as well as Capital DC REIT reporting this week. Uh, last but not least, for those of you who are looking at Singapore government bonds, uh, we have the Singapore one-year T-bill auction on Thursday, as well as the closing date for this month's Singapore savings bonds coming up on Friday. Okay, so those are the key dates to keep a lookout for. And with that, I'll hand over to Sunny, who will share the technical analysis. Okay, hey, thanks, Gerald, for that update and definitely a very busy uh, economic calendar that we are looking at with some of the macro data and some of the earnings that will be coming up both in Singapore and US. So now to the chart, we know that uh, from Gerald's presentation earlier, the outperformer was the Dow Jones Index on the weekly view. Uh, the other of the indices went down. Even the Russell 2000 Index also went up last week overall. So I think the team is pretty obvious. Uh, stock market is rotating out of the big tech winners this year so far and into more rate sensitive names. And also there could be another possible reason with the, with the rates environment coming down, the rate cut we are expecting to come in September. Uh, some of the uh, bond prices may go up uh, because of the uh, projected lower uh, yield or lower interest rates that's coming forward in the new bonds. So the, this could be some of the reasons why uh, most of the indices uh, actually retrace quite a bit or have a bit of a correction. And this is actually, uh, at least in my opinion, is a long overdue uh, correction that we are waiting for. So uh, example for the STI index, we have been rallying since the, uh, since the first week of June or the second half of uh, 2024. And now we have been, we have always been saying that wait for the index to pull back towards the 20 days and the 50 days moving average. And that is what we saw, at least for last week, index is trying to correct back because it has gone up too fast in too short a period of time. Okay. So we reached a high of 3,509 points. Uh, we talked about some of the projections towards the end of the year. Round number will be 3,006. That was the target. Uh, but then this pull back towards the uh, 20 day moving average, which is the Bollinger Band basis at 3,420 points. So this is the first key level to watch for the STI index and using the indicators as a gauge of the current pullback momentum. I think this 20 day moving average may not be the turning point yet because if you look at the MACD indicator, we just had a crossover of the MAC line below the signal line. Hence, you have a red color negative uh, MACD bar. That means that this confirms the change of direction. Although this data point is just on today, Monday, 22nd July, we need the confirmation to come in at the end of the market close to see whether this is indeed a positive uh, crossover. And that means that we are going into a correction right now, according to the MACD indicator. 
On the RSI, we already breached the 70 point overbought mark uh, somewhere last week. And now the RSI is coming down. It has also crossed below the 70 point mark now and below the 14 days RSI uh, moving average at the reading of 71. So the latest RSI reading at 58 is looking to target to stabilize around the 50 point neutral mark level. And that means uh, we have also not reached that point yet at least. So for now, I think market will still be coming down a bit further more. And the key levels to look at besides the 20 days moving average, the next level would be the blue color line, which is the 50 days moving average at 3,367 points. The previous high that we observed in June, the early part of June over here, that's around the level of 3,400, uh, 3,355 points, which is the high on the 3rd of a June period. This is this used to be a resistance level with a retracement or a pullback in the month of June. This could also have a change in polarity from a resistance to become a support level, which also coincides with the 50 days moving average. So these are the key levels to watch. 20 days moving average, 3, 4, 2, 0. And then the uh, 50 days moving average, 3, 3, 6, 7, or the round rate of 3,400. This, uh, this is the area or zone of support that we are looking at right now, and we will need a confirmation of a uh, rebound on the indicators before we take any action on these two levels. Okay, so let's move to the Dow Jones index, the US indices as well. So we have also been talking about uh, a possible correction, looking for support at the 20 days and 50 days moving average. The Dow Jones index, okay, as you can see, uh, is also this only is the only uh, positive uh, weekly performer among the three major U.S. indices. So we still have a pullback on thurs, uh, Thursday and Friday. We touch a all-time high or the Dow Jones index at the level of 41,376 points. And we ended last week just slightly above the 40,000 handle at 40,287 points. So one of the key levels that I'm watching for the Dow Jones index, if you observe over here, we have in the May period, we have a mini uh, double top kind of a scenario happening. And just slightly below this level, which is around 40,089 points, uh, at 38, 39,888 points in the March period, you also have a sort of a double top scenario. So this double top used to be resistance, um, a resistance area, but it could have a change in polarity now to support the Dow Jones index as well. So this is one possible level that we are looking at before we hit the 20 days moving average at 39,684 points or the 50 days moving average at 39,367 points. So both of these levels are below the 40,000 handle. So there is a question mark right now whether we can hold on to the 40,000 handle. And of course, we hope that the 40,000 handle will be a consolidation area for the Dow Jones Index as we move into the earnings season. On the indicator-wise, you can see that MACD definitely converging towards the signal line, at least in the past two trading sessions. So if a crossover happens, definitely we will go into a deeper retracement. But if not, uh, we are looking at the uptrend momentum subsiding right now. We have not gone into negative territory yet. So the uptrend that we observed since the beginning of the month in July is starting to uh, reduce its momentum right now. And we will see where that momentum goes and see whether where it could consolidate on those levels that we mentioned earlier. The RSI definitely hit a high of uh, above 80, which is above the 70 point overbought level. And we have now pulled back towards the 60 point level, also below the 14 days RSI moving average of 65. So at least we have to wait until the RSI hit the 50 point level again, and then we reassess uh, what will happen from there, whether there are indications of a consolidation or a rebound on the Dow Jones Index before getting back in on the Dow Jones Index. Key levels to watch, 20 days moving average, 39,684, with the previous two uh, resistance level having a change in polarity close to the 40,000 point level, which is a round number. So psychologically, that could also be a support level for the Dow Jones Index. Next, let's move to the S&P 500. S&P 500 has already breached the, uh, the 20 days moving average, which is around the 5,540 points level. We closed around 5,505 points last Friday, which could be using this previous high that we observed on 20th June, having a change in polarity as a support level. But looking at the indicator wise, you can see that MACD has crossed over the signal line, meaning that the direction of the index now is going downwards. 
and this divergence of the signal line, uh, the MAC line away from the signal line is at a pretty uh, steep angle. So that means that the downtrend momentum will likely be very strong and hence we could we have we have a very high chance of testing the 50 days moving average, which is the blue line, as well as the uh, lower bound of the Bollinger Band at around the 5,400 points level. So we are looking at at least another 100 points down uh, before we could find the, the first support level with the next support level coming in on the high of 23rd May, also having a possible uh, reversal or possible change in polarity from a resistance to a support level at around the 5,340 points level. So we are we are looking at a possible retracement of between 100 to 150 points from the 5,500 level that we saw last Friday. Uh, RSI has also moved into uh, the middle zone of the uh, RSI indicator. The latest reading at 49 has already is just one point below the 50 point neutral level. If it goes below that, then definitely the momentum is going to be very weak and hence the retracement of 100 and 150 points level could be a highly possible scenario. So do take note of that or the reading of the indicators momentum as well as some of the key levels on the uh, S&P 500 index chart. Lastly, let's touch on the NASDAQ Composite Index before we round off today's weekly market review. We touched the all-time high on 11 July at 18,671 points. We were unable to hold on to the 18,000 handle and now we are at 17,726 points. The previous high that we observed on 17 June, uh, that has already broke. Uh, last Friday has already broke this level and we have also broke below the 20 days moving average as well. We are now approaching the 50 days moving average at 17,505 points with the next support level on the high that we observed on 28 May. And that is around the 17,000 handle at 17,032 points. So the 17,500 and the 17,000 level will be two key levels that we are watching for the NASDAQ Composite Index. Indicator-wise, you can see, needless to say, last three trading sessions has already made the MACI cross over the signal line, meaning the direction going forward right now is that uh, the NASDAQ Composite Index is going down. So some of the traders, short-term traders, might be shorting the market definitely based on the MAC indicator. And the RSI has also breached below the 50-point neutral mark, which means momentum is very weak now in the NASDAQ Composite Index, which also explains the, the theme of rotation out of the tech stocks. So I think for now, NASDAQ Composite Index will be facing a lot of pressure until at least it reaches around the 17,500 or the 17,000 handle, okay, 17,000 round number, before we start to see a rebound on the NASDAQ Composite Index. Okay, so these are my updates for this week weekly market review on the major indices. Anything else to add, Gerald, that we need to look out for going into the week uh, ahead? Yeah, so quite a number of things to look out for. Um, we have some of the correction that you mentioned earlier uh, from the past week. Uh, from the geopolitical side, we still see quite a lot of developments heading into the US presidential elections. Um, at the same time, we are actually starting with the earnings season. So those are the key things that I'll be keeping a lookout for um, as that will drive the market in the coming week. Yes, uh, with this uh, pullback and correction happening, I think the earnings season is even more important and valuations need to stay up with what the market is expecting. So I think that there's a lot of things to watch out for this week. And we will also continue to update our viewers next week as well on our weekly market review. So I'd like to thank everyone for taking time to watch today's video. And we will see you again next Monday on the next weekly market review. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.